Hi everybody, it's Zane with Sailing Views. I have George Zabo, star phenom. He has actually won the star world championships. He's won, I don't know. This guy is amazing. I've known him for a long time. He's won tons of things in snipes, stars, lasers, laser twos, you name it. This guy is a great sailor. He really uh, became famous in college and uh, now he is a sail maker for Quantum Sales. He is one of the lead sail designers or maybe not. I don't know what he really does. Let's find out. George, how you doing? Hi, Zane. How you been? I'm all right. So, uh, with that little intro, what did I get wrong? Oh, I don't know. Um, still trying to figure out how to sail fast in college, but we figured out slowly by sailing seven days a week. Yeah. Uh, my laser tube campaign wasn't that great. I was a crew, and it was kind of tough to trapeze. I remember those days back in high school. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you ever got us back there. You guys did pretty well on that part, but mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't too bad. I hear you. All right, so uh, how did you get started sailing? You know, did you start as a kid like most people ask or, or tell me, or how did you get started? Yeah, my dad sailed all the time, and I always had model boats, and they always got new sails recut on them all the time since I was a little kid. And I uh, got put into junior program sailing when I was eight, and just didn't really care for the racing part, but I always went cruising around when I was 10. I had a laser, and we used to have, I think the record was 10 kids on my laser at 10 years old, no life jackets. and. <laughs> Half the time, two kids up the mast trying to capsize us. You couldn't go very far until you're swimming again. Yeah. And uh, just kind of enjoy the cruising thing. And actually, as I got older, uh, I think I was, I forgot how old my dad threw out the TV, so we had nothing to do with our friends. And what do you do? I don't know. What do you do? I don't know. It's part of lasers in the water, so went sailing. So figured out how to get fast with them, and eventually they got me going racing. And, you know, going racing is hard because you had ley lines. You had to remember to tack once in a while. So it was like <laughs> two in practice. So figured that out. And, eventually figured out some tactics and you know they burnt out a little bit after college but I was still kind of gung-ho and excited and stuck with it yeah well it's, you know that that's interesting you're saying your dad threw out the TVs you had nothing to do um like you say I've, I've got a, a nine-year-old boy and he you know I love the boy but he is hates sailing hates boating if I could take him out on a motorboat and go like three knots idle speed only he's okay if I put him on a sailboat, he's like, we're healing, we're going too fast. I don't know. That's a whole other issue. Um, yeah. All right. So, kids out on the power boat, but we usually go out and take a look at the seals on the bait barge or go look at the Navy dolphins. They're, hopefully, if their trainers are out, they feed them and they let them jump for the little girls and it's good yeah. fun. But, yeah, they definitely like the power boats. We get a little sailing in, though. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Uh All right. So uh, who were some of the early influences? Who taught you a lot? Who... Uh, really got you, you know, moving up the path? Yeah, I'm not sure, you know, it's, um, my dad was good friends with Dennis Connor, and he used to come over to the house for dinner with his kids, and, you know, I was another guy to me at the time, and didn't realize, you know, who I was talking to, it was some guy we're having pizza with, whatever, and, uh, <laughs> my dad would go sail him on the weekends, and so, you know, I was always learning from them, and I was always driving around the Starfleet, and I think I was crewing in the Star when I was 12, Wow. Or trying you know going out sailing with some friends and and so you get to you know hold, you know hold the wrench on the underside of the deck for some of these great sailors you had no idea they knew how to who, who they were at the time so but I was talking about 16 yeah still had a laser but dad said go take the star sailing and pretty slow at that point it was pretty embarrassing sometimes but yeah so we went out there and you know the whole Starfleet used to be really strong we probably had 25 boats here and just amazing sailors in the day and you know you, the whole the whole yacht club is always pretty pretty interesting in yacht club seeing you know, a yacht club you you, know, you start doing some silly projects and you think you got an idea and you know doug peterson will walk by and doug what do you think we had to do and he'd give you a 10 second answer and walk away and you know later on it'd be bruce nelson or someone else and so you know i always had a lot of really amazing people around the yacht club that could just give you a little tidbit here a tidbit there over the years yeah i mean I know uh, the who's who of sailing and designing and sail making and just pretty much the entire uh, sport. There's a lot of you out in San Diego. Um, I, yeah, it's you know, pretty amazing. Yeah, it, it, it can't be bad. I know I went out there uh, sailing laser twos years and years ago. I think I, I don't even remember how old it was, 17 or 18 or something, 16, I don't know, and was just amazed at everybody I got to meet and hang out with and you know, it was cool. I think you were one of them um, back in the, this is back in the old days. All right, so let's move on to a, a couple little questions here on this interview. All right, you've been sailing, and like I said, you didn't think you uh, 
you know, you weren't taking it very seriously, but at what point did you think you were good? Ah, still working on that. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you just kind of have fun with it. You know, you get out there and you want to try to win a regatta and you try to win another regatta. I want to bring that regatta. And you start practicing and then you win a few more regattas and, and it gets kind of fun. You know, you want to win that regatta and then you, know, you get some good years and bad years and, and, uh, you know, there's so, it's so hard here to, you know, who's, who's going to say that, you know, you're a good sailor when you got Lowell North who's, you know, won four star worlds or you got Reynolds has won two and you've got, you know, Vince Bruno's won his worlds and everybody else at our club. And they're such great sailors that, you know, you still think you're always chasing that, that dream to some extent. Yeah. You're you know, pretty much so. always chasing. I know out there, every time you, you reach a hurdle and I don't know how it is with you, but I know, uh, growing up for me, I had, you know, phenomenal sailors around here to, to racing us, you know, being, you know, the Lovells, the Meads, you know, uh, the Danes, the Weatherleys, Galloway, they were just, they, they just went on and on and on. And I know every time I think I beat somebody good, there was a pinnacle, there's always another one and always another one. Yeah. And you're always cl trying to climb a ladder to get, get better. So you're um, trying to build your skills. And I think what happened is you started selling multiple classes and as you start selling multiple classes, you know, Thistle Fleet would, tell you their theory on something and Snipe Fleet had another theory on the same thing and you know someone else had another theory you could put the several fleets theories together and it would start to make sense on you know all around and it was you know multiple classes that you know really helped you grow and figure things out a little more exactly all right so I'm going to ask you what you do for a living now you know I know but for the people that aren't that don't know you and don't really know where you're at or what you do what do you do for a living I'm still having fun. We get to design sales, build sales. We get to talk to our friends all all week long, and they call up and they even order sales. And uh, then we get to go out and sailing and um, go to regattas and support all our customers at regattas, race against them, help them go faster as well. And I'm still just having fun. This is sail making, um, competing, and designing and building and in every aspect of it of the sail making part. And it's just been a lot of fun over the years. Just getting to get a new boat and. Um, try to figure out how to build a sail for it that's faster. And so sometimes it's pretty good. I think there's only, there's only been one time we built a new sail and we had to take it back down, but that was pretty, <laughs> pretty good fun. Yeah. We had, uh, we tried, you know, snipe, the snipes we made mile are legal. I've come out with pretty good mile are jibs. So I was, let's try main. And that main was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> we, we sheeted in and the mile was so soft that the leech twisted and stretched open and, you sheet it in again, and the leech would twist open. Oh, this isn't going well. You sheet it in again, you get the leech almost where it should be, and you're out of luff curve because mass is so damn over bent. Like, oh, okay, we gotta figure this out. Yeah. Or we canned that project pretty quick, made some recuts, but canned it. Yeah, pretty much off. Stuck your dacker on. Now I know, uh, you know, you work with Quantum Sales because you never plugged that, but I'll plug it for you. George is a, you know, he works uh, in the San Diego Quantum Loft, and now I know. Uh, was speaking with you over the phone many times because you know we're working on these Viper sales and trying to get them dialed in. Now you've told me an interesting thing you did with the stars because I know you you make your own star sales and you and Reynolds tweak and play and measure and are constantly redesigning. Now you told me it's some crazy plug you built out of PVC, basically made a star mast or something. How did we we have a jig on the loft floor where we can hang a sail in the air and just kind of look at it and compare one sail to another sail and make sure they're coming out consistent. So it's just basically hanging a sail by three, by three corners, a little bit of support on the left so that we can check that they're all the same. Or if you make a change in design, you can see exactly how it is. And so it was, we did that mostly so that when we went from the patterns to the uh, computer design program, it just took a while and wanted to make sure that everything was coming out identical. And it was a little faster than going out in the water and checking stuff out in the water. So yeah, yeah, we've checked a lot of stuff, but. All right. So uh, I'm going to move on from that. Now that I gave you a, a quantum, a little plug. Um, what's your favorite boat to sail? And I know you've sailed a lot of them and I know you sail stars pretty much religiously. What is your favorite boat? Is it a star? Or is it something else or what? Yeah, you know, definitely upwind in a star boat's the best thing in the world. That's just so much fun to go upwind in a star. You know, the, the Snipe Fleet's just been an amazing family over the years, and you know, difference is it's still a hard boat to sail, but the Snipe Fleet hangs out in the parking lot and, and has just a great social time afterward. And the, the Star had that, um, but it's not not quite the same as the Snipe. Um, but definitely sailing wise, the Star's just one of the best boats in the sail. In the world yeah. sail. 
All right. Now, I know you go to Bermuda and you do the Star Sailors League, and I know you do really well in that. Uh, and, I, and not to mention all the random places you've sailed, what is your favorite place to sail? There's, there's two. Um, one's Nassau. Um, Nassau is just a neat spot. You know, that's just because the locals are so friendly and have so much fun. They're like, oh, the sailors are in town. And they'll come down and say hi. And you've sailed there so long that, you know, you got all these friends on the island. But you're going up wind and like, I'm going to run aground. You're like, no, it's still pretty deep. You know, you're going downwind and, you know, you're looking through the wave, you're surfing. Well, that's kind of weird. Um, but one thing that's fun with Nassau, too, is that, you get out there, and, and when it gets windy out there, um, actually, there's a photo of Nassau behind me, a gentleman, and about over 20 knots in the star. But the, the waves, they stack up. The, the They're on the flats there, and it's 15 feet across all the way for, for miles. And you get these these waves, and, and you're going downwind, and it's like skiing moguls downwind. But, you know, you, you, you see the front of the next mogul, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to die on that mogul. Like, <laughs> you go downwind, and you're going down this wave, and, like, this isn't going to end well. But the, the length of the wave and the length of the star, is just, it just matches. You're like, oh. That was easy. I'm okay. And so it's just so much fun to sail there that, you know, it works out. Yeah, we survived. The rig's still intact. Everything's good. Yeah, you wonder why sometimes. But yeah, so Nassau's just been an amazing place to sail over the years. And that's why, you know, I worked really hard when the SSL was in its infancy to, you know, push that the only place to sail is Nassau. And so unfortunately, they, they believed me and checked it out. And that's why that's there, which has been awesome. The other place is Lake Bracciano in Italy. And it's a volcanic lake, 45 minutes away from Rome and uh, the sea breeze comes up at two o'clock and about eight knots every day and wow. it's just really neat and it's um there's a city just next to it in Guilara, and we stayed at a friend's house there Claudio Chupo and you know one side of the house the walls are you know three feet thick and that part of the house is 350 years old and the other part of the house is 450 years old and the walls are a little thicker over there and you go in you go downstairs and there's these holes in the wall. What's that for? Well, that's where they used to put the wood across where they keep the animals in. The people lived upstairs, and you know, it's just a neat place to sail because it's just freshwater lake, no power boats allowed, and the water's warm, and it's just two best spots that I've been able to sail at. I had a lot of fun in those places. Yeah. Uh, th now, that sounds pretty interesting. Um, all right. Uh, what is the best sailing trip or sailing regatta? And it could be a transpac, a delivery, a, you know, just a great road trip you've had. What What's one of the best trips you've done? The best road trips? Or that's, sailing that's trip, a hard regatta. I, I mean, bad road trips that. Oh, we'll, we, we'll get to those next. But just think of something <laughs> that stands out as one of your best trips. You know, is it winning the world championship, winning, a, you know, a sailing league event, a, a star event? Is it. You know, a junior event. You know, I don't care. Come up with something good. Shucks, I don't, I don't, I don't know which one was good. I mean, they're all pretty darn fun. Yeah, it's just so neat to go everywhere. But yeah, definitely winning the worlds was fun because you had, you know, fifty or more people at the airport waiting for you when you got home, and another fifty or more in your driveway. And you know, Dad got pretty excited and got a limo, and we got out of the limo and little horse in the driveway and like hey well we brought your trophy back and you know this is you know, it's, you know like four or four other world champions in your several champions in your driveway with greeting is pretty special return oh yeah but, yeah i'm not sure you know they're all they're all pretty neat pretty neat trips over the years all right well that that definitely sounds like one hell of a greeting um now yeah. conversely you know completely opposite the absolute worst trip you've ever had you know, it's, it was a trip, and uh, I forget where it started, but it was, you know, we used to trailer to Sniper Goddess all the time, and uh, we, we would drive cross country sometimes twice a year with three-boat trailer, four-boat trailer, one on the roof of the van, and we left for Miami, I don't know if it was Circuit or which regatta it was, but we left for Miami and thought we'd be home in, you know, two, three, you know, three days' time and driving with another guy, and we got to... I don't know, it was Louisiana, Mississippi, somewhere in there. We got off that long bridge, and my buddy, he's like, I got to get a turducken. What's a turducken? I don't even know what a turducken Only is. Only in the south, a turducken, yeah. Right, it's a, a turkey with a, a duck chicken and it. a duck stuffed all inside it. And yeah. I'm like, okay, let's go get a turducken. So we get a turducken, and, and I think the next thing we know is, you know, I'm, I'm asleep, and, and uh, bear bang, I wake up and look out the back and sure enough, you know, there's another red hot spindle bent up on the trail. I'm like, oh, I've seen this, this is not good. Look out the side window and there goes the trailer tire passing. You know, that's even worse, okay. <laughs> so I was like, all right. 
So we get out, we stop the car, go back, and it's been raining for a bit. Well, you know, let's go, we'll go find the tire. And it's getting dark, and we're trying to find the tire, and it's been raining for a while. And ends up there's been a hurricane just south of the Gulf, and that's why it's been raining so hard. And, and so we look for the tire, we can't find the tire, and I'm walking through mud, and my, I'm up to my knees in mud trying to find this tire. I'm like, I just got to give up. Like, we just can't do this. Let's just deal with it for now. And so we get, we get the, we get the trailer and a flatbed truck, and and it goes somewhere, and we, we go to get a hotel now, but, you know, it's a hurricane south. It's been raining pretty hard, and everybody's gotten off the road, and there's no, no hotel rooms. No hotels. Oh, gosh, what do we do now? <laughs> so, like, all right, they go, we got one room. Okay, this place got one room. Great. What is it? It's like the honeymoon suite or something. Like, oh, God. <laughs> like, what do you do with this? It's, like, it's got one bed, it's got no shower, and it's got this bathtub that's, like, 18 inches deep. Like, you're kidding, right? I've been in the car for a day and a half, and I got a bathtub, and my legs are covered in mud. So... <laughs> And I, I turn on the bathtub and I, I fill this thing up with mud pretty much. It's like there was no bathing after that. I'm like, I'm not going to get the mud out, but oh well. So I got the mud out and, you know, I looked at the one bed and I went back to the car and grabbed the bed out of the car and slept in the sleeping bag and gave my buddy the bed. You know, next day I met some pretty nice people and we bought an axle and we put the axle on the trail and he gave us the tools to do it and, you know, threw away the old axle and we're on the road again. Oh, guys, okay, good. Here we go. Okay. A little bit delayed. We're thinking, oh, maybe we'll make this. We could have got in San Diego. We'll stop by and see our friends. It's going to start Friday. You know, we get to, maybe it's Arizona. I don't know, Gia Bend. And Gia Bend, it's, uh, the car won't come out of park. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. So what do you do now? I don't know. But <laughs> my friend starts losing it, and I had to tell him to go away and take a walk. So he, <laughs> he starts walking away in the desert. Well, this is good. <laughs> so, you know, like, what do you do now? So I just start getting the wrenches out and taking the front end of the car part under the stream well and that didn't do anything but we had pieces <laughs> everywhere so we we took the took the trailer off and the gas station and put it over and you know we got we called a flatbed truck and you know for day before we had the snake trailer on the flatbed today we got the car on the flatbed okay here we go what do we do? so we get in there and somehow the guy figures out how to get out of park i'm like cool all right so gives the car back and Gets it off the flatbed, and we keep we go back and get the trailer and keep going. But now we're kind of afraid to put the car in park, so we leave it <laughs> neutral every gas stop and leave it on. <laughs> so we don't know what's going to happen here. So all right, we can, you know, a few more hours, another half day, whatever it was, and we're thinking, oh, we're going to make the Friday, you know, opening this regatta. No, maybe we'll make the Saturday party. No, we're not making the Saturday party. <laughs> like okay, so we just keep going and keep going along, and we're, you know, we're, this trip's turning into an adventure. When we finally get to his house, okay, we'll stop at your house, you know, we'll get some clothes, we'll get a shower, and then we'll go to the awards at this party. I'm like, okay, great idea. So we, we stopped at his house, we put the car in park, and can't get out of park. <laughs> okay, that's that's problem one, right? We still get to the awards, but because you got a car, okay, I'll do that. So we go to his house, and we're like, we're going to get a shower now. Well, it ends up they turn the water off to the condo building. Like, oh, oh my God, you're killing me. <laughs> so Dude, it never stops. <laughs> it's just like, that's three. What do we do now? Like, so we got in his car. I went to the yacht club and opened up the tab of one of the, the bar tab of one of the guys' boats on the trailer. And like, that's it. We're, <laughs> and we told the guys that came in from San like, we've been in the car for too many days. Here's what happened. You guys got to go figure it out. And then somehow it all unwound. <laughs> like, yeah, just like, we're done. We're in the bar for now. Y'all leave me alone. Somehow everybody else got the boat off the road from the trailer off the back, and you know we got the car to the shop the next day, and they put the front end, all the parts back in that I'd taken out, and that was definitely one of the worst trips across country. Oh uh, yeah, I can imagine. You know, uh, you know the junior program I was involved with, and you know that was part of our mo. You know, we'd travel across country with three or four vans. We'd break down wherever, you know, and we have to wait for. For money to get it wired in, so we get a new engine or a new transmission or a new what what have you, you know. And we're twenty kids strong running around just screwing up things and yeah, I've been there. I know what you're talking about. All right, so uh, yeah, road trips are fun. Yeah, they definitely can be. Um, all right, so I'm going to change this uh, this subject a little bit. This one's kind of weird, but what's the most interesting thing you've seen floating? Floating. Floating. Uh, it could be something I built. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I mean, I mean, I've seen. I, I mean, I don't know if it was a human arm, but I swear I saw like from here to here, floating in the water in Miami. This was, you know, early nineties. But I swear, even to this day, that it was part of an arm. Um, I didn't turn around and go back and check it out, but you know, I, 
slowed down a little bit, checked it out, looked, and I was like, just go back, bow down, and forget about it, you know? No, I got a dead seal. That's nothing. That's just stunk. But, you know, it's no arms. No. Huh? No okay. Or, so nothing interesting. All right, you're killing me, George. All right, well, let's... Kids and a little poor and dumber, and we didn't have a lot of money, and we wanted an I-14, but they didn't really exist in numbers back then. We got a... We got an old Flying Dutchman for $50, and we got a star rig that somebody gave us, and we took every broken laser top and bottom section and built racks on it and put trapezes on it and got some old sails and recut them to fit onto it and try to make a 14, and that was a pretty ugly thing floating on the water. <laughs> I can it's, only imagine. Uh, but at least, you know what, you had the gumption, the engineering to try to do it. All right, uh, what's your best role on a boat? I mean, are you strictly a driver, a tactician? Because I know you sail on big boats and other boats out there. What's your role? Say you jump on somebody's boat out there on a, a Sunday or Wednesday night, whatever. I'm definitely happy as a main trimmer, driver, or, or a tactician. You know, main trim, I always feel pretty good because you, you uh, can just help out so much keeping the boat going. You know, sometimes if it's a noisy boat, you just got to be quiet and keep it going. And if it's a, a messed up boat, you, gotta be able, you can be a little more involved in tactics or in... Uh, in, in boat handling and whatnot and you know tactics can be so much fun not just from seeing where to go and how to do it but but just to build that eight or ten person team and make everybody work together and be cohesive it's just so much fun to make that grow and work and you know bring a program together and make it work over this, over summer is just a, a blast you know I just always like that when things start coming together that way and that's a lot of fun yeah you know I, that's one thing I learned a uh, long time ago when I when, when I was younger growing up getting on becoming a tactician on big boat I thought okay my job was to just go left go right now I you know it took me a year or so to learn that no I have to orchestrate okay get ready to tack or you know say you're going in the job you're calling the dip the turn that you know you start controlling the boat and I wasn't quite aware of that and it took me a little while to figure it out now like like you just said it's really fun building a team standing back being an orchestrator I, I I love that part. That I think that's fun. Nice yeah, watching everybody get better day by day and helping them learn is just it's it's really rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is. All right. Uh, so, do you consider yourself an aggressive sailor or conservative? Definitely more conservative in certain ways. I'll be aggressive boat on boat to an extent, but I try to stay three feet away mm -hmm. and not use the rules as a sword but a, a shield. So, yeah. I'd say more conservative in a lot of ways. I'm not. Conservative also usually usually not the guy to bang a corner, but you do bang a corner from time to time. But yeah, you more know, of the middle guy. You know, uh, I've sailed against a lot of you guys from San Diego, and I don't know who taught all of you, but every single person in San Diego is super conservative. Really? I mean, to me anyway, y'all are always tenfold more conservative than what anyone else in the rest of the country is. East Coast, you know, Florida, Gulf Coast, definitely. You know, and, and, and Gulf Coast, I know we're all, we're not just aggressive, we are hyper aggressive. Um, East Coast is kind of a mix of conservative, aggressive. Florida is a little more conservative, but out on the West Coast, you know, San Diego area, especially the sailors there are always, you, you never find them more than 25% out of the middle. They're always the group that's in the middle of the starting line. They're the guys who, you know, definitely don't push, I mean, some of them do push the, the, the issues of the march, but most of them don't. Um, wh what is it with San Diego that just breathes that mentality? Or do you? Have, I don't do you know. Because it's a pretty great favorite racetrack most of the time. You got to go right half the time. So I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. I have no idea why it would be that way. Hmm. Well, it's just something know. I've noticed, and this is one of my questions I ask everybody. Most of them say they're aggressive, or you know, or they're very conservative, and someone else I'll sail with is aggressive. So it's hard to say, but hmm. eh, yeah, food for Who thought. are the aggressive sailors? Uh, uh, Loring, you know, obviously myself. Uh, Jacoby's kind of the middle. Uh, Patrick Wilson's conservative, uh, which is kind of shocking growing up with Loring and myself. Um, I don't know. I, it, it, it's, it's a good blend of, you know, it kind of bounces all over the place. Um, all right, well, let's move on to your maneuvers. What's one of the best maneuvers you've done? You know, a great start, great mark running, just a great race. 
That would be jiving the Bohemian salute. <laughs> okay, and not falling off, right? No, it sunk. Oh. All right, do tell. Do tell. Well, it was, you know, day after the SSL got out of the Bahamas and the Bahamians had already had the best of the best in sloops and they were going to take the star sailors and put them in a sloop and have them go racing. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So I was supposed to be the 9 a.m. start, so I got there, you know, a little 4 8 and said, oh, your start's at 8. I'm like, what? I'm like, or maybe I started at 10, I don't remember. But anyway, I got there early and I was supposed to be in the bigger boat and the guys in the smaller boat hadn't shown up yet, so. So you got you got to feel the team go sell a small boat like really oh, okay who's around man looked around for pickup crew and pickup crew was not too bad you know I got you know Johannes Polgar you know a European uh, <laughs> yeah. star champion got Taylor Canfield you know like okay you know who else oh that guy's pretty big oh he's 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 got second in uh, the Finns in, in England at the Olympics okay let's let's take the Great Dane there okay that's good yeah. we got. We got the media guy from the SSL. All right, I think we've got a team. Yeah, let's you go, got like a who's who of who's who, right? Uh -huh. well, this is the pickup crew. It's who's in the parking lot that day. Uh -huh. So we 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 got out there and we're an hour late and all the guys are anchored out and they started anchoring. Like we got to get this show on the road. Okay, fine. So the the Bahamian captain he's he's on board too and we kind of got probably too too many people on board, and uh, so we start. You know, they pull up the main and pull up the anchor and. That didn't go so well. We're already in last. <laughs> like, All right, let's figure this out. You know, practice. Yeah, right. Good luck. Uh, so we, we try to sail up wind, get up wind for a while. I'm like, let's go for attack. So you know they got these pry board things, and so Johannes picks up his pry board, and and um, the Great Dane he picks up his pry board, and they run across, and pretty much I'm in irons. I'm like, that's not so good. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, let's, let's figure this out. So the, the captain, he's he, he's going to drop the main, so it's the only way that you get out of irons. I'm like, no, we'll back it down. Okay, we'll, we'll try to back it down. We'll get back going. All right, you know, we get over close to the left lay line, and, you know, we're going to tack again. So they get the pry boards off, and we turn the boat, pull off the tack. Okay, thank goodness. So we're pretty far in last by now, and we got up the weather mark, and we're going to tack on the lay line. I think, you know, we've had crack two practice tacks now. We can do the third. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, man, no, man. Keep going, keep going, man. Like, no, no, we're, that's the lay line back there. we got to tack. No, no, man. So. Finally, he lets us tack. So we tack, and we get the pry boards across, and we whew, go around the weather mark. And we don't realize, you know, the, the courses they sail are a little different. You're around the weather mark to port. You're around the weather mark to starboard. I don't know why. Okay, so you go around the port, and then you go around the other way. Then. Right. So you don't have to tack or maneuver. You know, you just do drive low, make an S turn. You know, no yeah, maneuvers. Yeah, we didn't have that quite figured out yet. <laughs> we're, we're learning. We're learning. So we're... <laughs> So we get around the weather mark, and we won't attack finally. We overstand, and we reach back to the weather mark, and, and upwind is kind of fun. You know, my, my uh, Johannes Polgard, you know, European champion, he was our main sheet trimmer, and, you know, halfway upwind, he's promoted to bucket boy. <laughs> Captain hands in this bucket. He's like, something is peeing, but anyway, so he's, he starts singing German drinking songs. Like, this isn't good. <laughs> so he's, yo, yo, whatever, and German drinking songs upwind we go. Um, uh, we eventually get around the weather mark, and these things aren't very stable on the run. You know, you're going down wind, and pry boards in the water, and booms in the water, and pry boards in the water. I'm like, oh gosh, this isn't good. So I'm like, I gotta get control of this. I got no control of this thing. The captain, he's like, you gotta hike out on the pry further. I'm like, no, 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 no. If I want to sail, I'm, I'm reaching up high now. The mark's down there. I'm like, I, I gotta get down the mark. They're all sailing low. The only way to sail low is to put weight to lure and go low. He's like, no, you gotta put weight to weather. I'm like, I put weight to weather, I'm gonna reach more. But okay. So he puts weight to weather, and, you know, I forgot the best story upwind. It was a great Dane. You know, he, did, he thought it was doing a nice day sail. He brought his shoes, brought his cell phone, and he's going up one and going, what, very what, like this big, really thin guy. Very what? Like, okay, so we moved him to the back by upwind. But, um, so we're going down the wind. I'm thinking, okay, maybe I, can, maybe I can steer this thing down the waves and get control of it. So I try steering a little more, and the captain turns back to me, hey, man, don't steer so much. The rudder might come come off. Like, Oh, come on, <laughs> the rudder might come off. Like, no, no, no. You, so you realize you're holding like a two by four with the, some two wooden screws holding it in. It's right? a pretty big rudder, and this yeah. thing had a lot of helm, but so <laughs> I'm not allowed to steer anymore down the wind, and I'm not sure which way we're going to tip over and capsize. But here we go down the wind, and we're definitely not making the mark now. And I'm like, we got to jive, and the captain's saying, "No, man, you don't want, don't, don't jive, don't jive." I'm like, oh, we got to jive. I'm like, like, I look at Taylor Canfield. Hey, Canfield, what do you think? We got to jive. Yeah, we got to jive. So, all right, let's jive, you know? And back then, the, the captain's like, hey, man, we want to jive. All right. So, 
<laughs> well, you got you and Canfield, you got the Dutchman, the German, everybody. You got all this talent. You're all like, the march there. We got to turn. We got to turn, right? We got to turn. Back. We're just going to pull this off, right? Here we go. So, so like, okay, we're going to jive. So, you know, the guys, they get their pry boards, right? And, <coughs> and they go across, and you know, I, we don't even pull a main, and I just pull the knight. It's a perfect S turn jive. I pull in, the boom starts coming across. I'm turning back. Yeah. You know, everything's going perfect. Got the nice S turn jive. I swear to God, the boom gets to center line. As boom gets to center line, it doesn't go past center line. The boat just capsizes. I mean, there's no it's runners. Water, it's underwater. It's gone. What it is? The boat's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, <laughs> we go in this jive. The boom comes across the center line. It never gets past center line. The sail doesn't have a chance to fill. And it just capsizes. And sinks. And three, two, one, it's gone. It's underwater. <laughs> like, hmm, look at that. <laughs> the captain is so pissed off at like, you guys right now. It's like, you sank my boat. <laughs> You can look it up on 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 I've seen the videos the up there somewhere, yeah. you know. But there's pretty there's you can you can tell who the captain is. He's pretty unhappy. <laughs> the rest of us are laughing our head off, and you know, there's a little bit of sail sticking out of the water because things on the bottom, and you know we're all holding on the pry boards. Like, oh, this isn't good. It's <laughs> down there, and we've definitely lost the race. Yeah. Oh, so right. we we spend the next hour and a half, you know, in the water. Just uh, trying to get the boat up or to hang on, wait for somebody to rescue you. Well, that was the first thing. You know, the first boat on the scene was a media boat, and they launched a drone, and the guy jumped in with a GoPro and took underwater footage. I'm like, this is not good. Yeah, you know, they the don't care about the you. Scene, they want the pictures, yeah. man. <laughs> next guy on the scene, you know, he's he's yelling in some sort of native tongue at the captain, and they're hassling him, and, you know, he's not happy, and we don't know what's going on. And you know, next two boats on, on the on the scene were the defense force. Oh God, here we go. We've definitely done something wrong now. We've got two defense force boats out here. So we, like, what do we do? Like, so we, you know, unfortunately, uh, one of my friends, uh, they've got the whole thing televised. It's on the, on the thing on the beach. Oh, it's on the big screen back, back of the island. Yeah. It's laughing at us. I'm like, oh God. So what do you do? So we kind of figure out, okay, you got to take the sail off. So, you know, unfortunate buddy of mine comes up and, you know, like, okay, Peter Bruce, you got to anchor over there and drift back up on us, and, and uh, you know, we need your help. And he's a pretty good diver, and uh, Canfield is an amazing diver. Who knew? Yeah. Um, so Canfield and Peter Bruce are diving down 15 feet and getting the sail off, and, you know, they get the boom off, and at one point the rudder kind of dislodges itself, and Canfield looks down, it's shooting up in the air and in the water at him. He fortunately moves over and gets out of the way of the rudder. <laughs> and um, we need some pliers. Nobody's got any pliers. I'm looking around, nobody's... So that's the defense force. Hey man, you get any pliers and no pliers. So the defense force goes in to get some pliers. Um, you know, this point They're just leaving shivering. you out there to float and figure it out. Right. Obviously, this either happens a lot or they're just like, "Ah, hey, these are the famous star sailors. They'll figure it out." You know. I think it happens once a month. They sing one of these, but oh. so eventually, eventually we get the mast off, we get the pliers, we get everything apart, and then the, the thing's still sitting on the bottom. And it's sitting there and. Uh, We'll figure out they're full of lead, lead, lead weights and lead ballast. Like, oh my God, really? <laughs> so Canfield and my buddy are taking these 50 pound things of lead and pushing off and going up. And the German and I got life jackets on. We're trying to grab them and swim them all the parts <laughs> over my friend's <laughs> boat. And it was a mess. And so yeah, we get finally get all the thing back to so they, I think we tied a line onto the hull while it was underwater and the fence force pulled it and eventually it came up to the surface. And we got back to shore and put all the parts on the pier and said, we're done. Here's your boat back. <laughs> Hey, uh, we're getting on a plane. We're out of here. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for letting us go to sail. Okay. Oh, good Lord. That is one heck of a story. George, don't let me forget that I'm bringing you back on when I, when, when I ship this channel to story you know, story mode. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm bringing you on for that. All, All right. right. But make I sure got to move on with about his diving ability. Yeah. I got to move on a little bit here. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. What is your favorite project or program you've been involved in? Oh, dude, I just say there's so many FAR 40 programs that have been a ton of fun. And that's yeah. just been a lot of fun with those, those big boats like that. Yeah. I mean, all those boats were, you know, back when those boats came out, they were just amazing. And everybody, every who's who was in them. And they were, you yeah. know, you had money, you had talent, you had just, it was yeah. incredible. Before that, even the, the 1D35s before that were yeah. absolutely a ton of fun. Yeah, I sailed on, I think, hole number nine. I remember picking up from the factory, going sailing. We did a block island race week. By far one of my favorite boats. Um, yeah. I wish I would have taken off a little better than they did, but great boats. Yeah. All right. Uh, America's Cup. 
Now, I know you're in the land of America's Cup in San Diego. Do you love the current version? Do you wish more for the older version? Or or do you, you know... It's what it is. Yeah. It, it's, it's what it is. It's kind of, you know, made it here. So we, we had a lot of fun growing up when I was, you know, nine and ten years old. Well, I was, uh, Dennis Conner had all those guys out training all the time in San Diego. And we always housed one of the grinders or one of the trimmers or whatever for six, nine months at a time. And I always had a different guy in the house that was part of that program. And it was... It was a different deal in the day, you know. Some of those guys, I think it was Ian McKechnie, you know, he's out sailing, and what'd you get? Oh, I got a shirt and a pair of shorts this summer. Awesome, you know. It was not pro sailing back then, and yeah, you know, the old ladies would come down and make the sandwiches for all the boys for the day, and yeah, you know, it was pretty fun seeing all those boats down at the club back in the day for the America's Cup. That was kind of a neat yeah. way to see it back then. Yeah, it's a little different now. Now it's, I tell you what, there's so much technology and uh, engineering going on; it's insane. And 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 something I was thinking about, and I was had an interview yesterday and we were talking about this of uh, it's basically like you know there's so much talent on the boat that you have olympians and world champions that are now you know they're already really good in shape and now they're just becoming grinders and it's like jesus they're just you just it, to me it boggles the mind how how talented every single person is on that boat and they're not even you know the, I guess they're just there for the extra knowledge or in case anything goes wrong. But Jesus, you know, back in the day, you know, all that, you know, we didn't have that talent back then. Now it's just insane. I don't know. Yeah. I can go off on a rant on it, but I'd, mm -hmm. I'd rather not. Um, let's change it this up to future sailing. What are your future plans in sailing? Or do you have them or do you know yet? Or Well, tomorrow I'm going to put my model boat in the water. And we're gonna race that. And Tuesday we're gonna put the lane of twelve in the water. We're back a lot out on the water. We're reviving that fleet right now because it's the only racing in San Diego. Yeah. Um, after that, I don't know what regattas are gonna come up next, but you know, hopefully we'll still be able to have the Star Worlds in November and the North Americans in August. We'll see if that comes back. But you know, right now this year it's looking like a, a Star Boat year. The I was hoping to get a little J70 time in, but that Worlds is canceled. So we'll see how this year plays out. It's still day by day, week by week, what's opening up. Yeah. All right. Um... Now here's a interesting one, or maybe not. Uh, what do you think about women sailing, or do you have any thought on it? Do you have you even? Is it something that you feel like has been promoted or needs to be promoted more? What are your thoughts on women sailing? I mean, and the state about of that. it now, you know, you know. All the girls I know sail pretty well, you know. One of yeah. Our good friends is Carol Cronin, and she sails just fine going to the Olympics, and yeah, yeah, and you haven't given any that. thought. You know, the women are pretty good. You know, I know. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, the, the early 90s, late 80s, you know, there was such a discrepancy of men versus women, and there weren't very many women. And mm -hmm. I know uh, when you and I were growing up uh, during our, our junior careers and, you know, young adult careers, U.S. sailing, uh, how are you, or whatever it was called, you know, back then they were just starting to kind of promote women sailing. And I feel like now it's kind of made its way to where, you know, women can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I've I've had some female interviewers say that it's it's great but needs work. I've had some of them say, "Why are we being put separate? We need to be racing against the boys." I haven't quite figured out. You know, God forbid, I'm I'm not a woman, so I don't know what the right answer is. What are your thoughts on it? Tell me, get a snipe. We have girls and boys in that fleet, and girls drive, and they do just fine at the worlds. And there's some girls out there that sail super well, yeah. so. Yeah, and you, and a lot of the sniper stuff now, it's mixed teams going in the Western Hemispheres and whatnot, so, you know, go get a boat that makes sense. You know, I've sailed a snipe, I think, once, uh, and I think you, you were at the regatta. It was a North Americans or something in Atlanta. I think you were there. I know Mendel Blatt was there, uh, Henry Filter. There were a bunch of guys there. You might have been there. I don't know. But I borrowed a boat that hadn't been used in 20 years. It was John Dane's, you know. A boat he had in his storage shed. You know, I picked the boat up, I cleaned it, wet sand it. I'm like, all right, let's go to this regatta. This girl I was dating at the time, neither of us knew how to sail a snipe. Apparently, rig tension has changed in the time frame. I mean, we're out there with a loose rig, and the rig's made to flop around compared to what you guys were. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, me and the girlfriend at that time did not survive that regatta. So, <laughs> you know... I'm not sure how I feel about snipes. <laughs> no, they just need to practice. <laughs> yeah. 
I need to have a boat first. All right, so let's move on to uh, with growing sailing. What are your ideas on growing sailing? How do we grow the sport? How do we get new people in? Hey, you, know, you, just, you just have fun. The more fun you have, the more people are going to come and have fun with you. It's, if that's something as stupid and simple as a hamburger, hot dog, barbecue after sailing on uh, Saturday night, you know, it's just having fun. Whatever it is to make it more fun all the time. And uh, I think the social aspect is neat. One thing that I didn't realize how valuable it was at the time, but Elmina's Bay, they had a big barbecue and you had to grill your own steak or chicken. And cooking your own steak or chicken with this long, you know, 10 or more foot barbecue brought 30 people together and they were stuck together talking to some person you didn't know who was out on another race course for 15 minutes while your piece of meat cooked. Yeah, And you're so stuck. you just got to meet these great new people and you know, if it doesn't have to be expensive, it just has to be fun and just short. And if it's not fun, people aren't going to come back. So, you know, it's not necessarily the all day trek to the ocean with the five mile tow and the racing and the sail back in that's upwind for 20 knots in rain. It's, you know, what's fun. You're absolutely right. All right. So, so uh, my sailing on Tuesday night, we're bringing our plan is we're, we're this year, this, this next Tuesday, we're going to up it from last Tuesday. We're not just bringing cookies and chips. We're, we're bringing squirt guns, you know, because yeah. the other little kid, he had water balloons. But, yeah. you know, we're going to have to up it a little bit to compete with that little kid this week. So that's that's our plan for on Tuesday. I got you. That sounds good. Um, it reminds me of my youth. Uh, all right. So what kind of uh, what's your best advice for new sailors, new boaters? Other than keeping it fun, it's just go out and practice. And going out and practicing is where your boat speed comes from. If you don't practice, you, you, you're not going to do well. And if you want to do well, you got to take notes. And and if you take notes every time you go sailing, eventually you're going to be able to look back and go, what did I do that day where I went that so fast? You know, I was eight knots in flat water, and my all was there. Oh, okay. And you can go back and really sort out your own thoughts. Obviously, you read everything, but you know, you got to get on a bunch of different boats and go sailing. But you know, the more time on the water you can get, but you got to have fun time on the water. All right. Well, normally I have one more question, which is more of a have anything to add. But instead of that, I'm going to ask you this one. Now, you're a pretty accomplished sailor. Wouldn't you admit that? Yeah, I've done all right. All right, you've done all right. What's it like to go to work every day with Mark? Just, you know, yeah, I think I made the comment years ago. It's like someone asked me that, and like, you know, are you on top, Mike? Oh, I won Snipe Nationals last week. That was pretty cool, but he just won Keel Week by 23 points. So it's like, you know, it's just another person, and, you know, you get ideas and butt heads or get along, and every day is a little different. And it's, you know, what it is, Johnny? There's so much talent in that loft that it's, it just amazes me. You know, you guys are, are y'all still trying to one up each other or y'all just sort of balanced out? Y'all been together a while. Have y'all balanced out yet? Or? One up each other. I'm not sure that's it. We definitely butt heads on which way to make a sail better sometimes. And they'll want to go one way and I want to go the other way. I'm like, oh, you know, yeah. probably if we want to go opposite directions, probably just find where it's at. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, with that, everybody, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank George Zabo. Yeah, once again, George, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Um, and for the rest of you people that have been out here, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, sailing views, pass it on, tell it to your friends. I plan on more of these, at least for the next couple of weeks. I'll be changing the schedule up soon, but I'll let you know. Anyway, George Zabo, Quantum Sales, if you want to talk to him, he's in the San Diego loft. Look him up, find him, or just go on your friendly star, your local star, or your local snipe, and you might see him. Anyway, that's it. This is Zane signing off. Thank you, everybody. Over, out, and bye-bye.